Uh, I thought the first 60 minutes were pedestrian. It was slow. It was un it was just blah. Uh, I think our defending in general is just not good enough. We give away too many chances. We give away too many goals. Uh, it's uh, it's on me, and it's going to change in the next three weeks. We have three weeks until uh, we play a game next week, which we I want to see a reaction. But we have three weeks to get better defensively because we can't we can't keep conceding goals and chances at the rate we are. And it's a mentality. Our mentality is that we love to attack and we love to have the ball, but we cheat defensively and we rest and we don't com we don't concentrate and we don't do the little things that it takes to be a good defending team. We cheat them, and it's un it's it's going to end. Our guys aren't going to be on the field. I've shared that with them, and it's going to end. Our mentality to defend has to change. We're going to be a good attacking team. I'm confident in that. I'm sure of it as we get everybody rolling. The second half, when we made some changes, the intensity and the forward thinking and the attacking hit another speed and another level, no problem. But our defending and giving up chances is just ridiculous right now, and it's on me. We're going to change it. Thanks, Greg. Next, we'll go to Damian Kelman. Hey Greg, um, you were talking there about um, the attacking, but I think in the month of August, the uh, offensive output has sort of waned down a little bit. Um, you haven't scored multiple goals since I think late July. Um, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, some of it is you know missing opportunities. Some of it is because we don't defend well and we start too many attacks deep in our half of the field. It's you know many attacks are many goals are scored in transition. Many goals are scored when you recover balls in good areas, when the team is disorganized and you play forward and you attack quicker. We are, we've been pretty impotent on, on set pieces at times, but we're leaving out a whole section of the game, in my opinion, where the ma majority of goals are scored because we don't, it's too easy for the opposition just to get into our half the field and for us to recover balls too deep on, in our area. I think we're the, we're the team who starts the attacks the deepest uh, of any team in the league, which means we have to go anywhere from 120 to you know 85 yards every time we want to create a chance. So I think we can help ourselves. We can build more momentum into our attacks. If again, if we can, as a group, we need to change our mentality to defend, to be uh, harder to play against on that way, to recover balls in better ways, to play forward in those transitions, to build the momentum like we had in in the second half. It had some speed to it. I thought at times it gets. We have to be able to play with speed and, and move the ball and move off the ball, but still remain disciplined about our positions to protect ourselves in transitions. But at least it was it was forward thinking. It made the opposition make some decisions. It made them have to make some plays in, in and around their goal. And then, of course, you know when we get into those areas, we've got to put things away. Kevin had another chance. He doesn't get it on goal. We've had we've had. We have chances. Last game, we have a point blank header from Derek, and the keeper makes a save. We had Sam hit the post. We have chances here and there tonight. I don't think we have as many chances as we should because we start our attacks too deep on the field too often. We need to start attacks higher, which means we need to defend better and we need to recover balls higher. But I, as I said to our guys, I think I think as a group, our mentality to defend isn't where it needs to be if we want to compete for anything. I think we love having the ball, but we don't necessarily work the way we need to work to get the ball back, and that, that mentality has to shift. Uh, one more thing. Could some of this even be you guys are in your, you know, I know you don't, you don't want to use excuses, but this is a third game and seven-day stretch here. Could part of that play the, play the factor in tonight's performance? Yeah, maybe, but I, I, for me, that's you know the stat I gave you about where we start our attacks is a season-long attack, our season-long stat. We start them the deepest of any team in the league. That's, you know, if you want to be aggressive and and you want to uh, you want to impose yourself on the opposition, then we can't start our attacks deep in our half. You know, we've talked about this over the last little bit, but it, it's now that our team has come together, our group is together. We're going to have some training sessions over the next couple of weeks. We. We have to improve on that side. That is the low-hanging fruit for us is we have to defend better. And that means, that means more than one thing, um, but it has, it has to be better. Thank you. And last question, we'll go to Gio Garcia. Hey, Greg. Um, I know it's a difficult game, especially against a rival like this. Um, obviously, with so many games, and you, you, you had to make a lot of rotations, um, but you also had a week uh, for your next game. Do you wish uh, you, you would have went differently with, with the starting lineup? I mean, in a way, the game kind of set up how I thought we could set it up, which is we give the opportunity for the guys who uh, who came on the field fresh to be able to push for the game. But again, coming out of the second half, the first 10 minutes of the second half, we give up a goal. That just it just. 
we, we can't do that. Um, and then the guys we put on uh, were fresh and went for it. But there's, there's more to it than that. It's, some of it is guys that were trying to get fit. It's guys who were playing a ton of matches. It's guys who were trying to manage a little bit. It's still the middle of the season and the middle of the summer. So it's not just about the, the one result. There's still a big picture here that we're trying to, uh, to play towards. Um, having said that, um, Guys are playing for the starting positions now. I think our team is getting more competitive for spots, and guys are going to have to uh, have to perform on both sides of the ball. And so, guys right now are getting chances, but as as the season grows closer to the end, there's going to be less and less chances as we get closer to the play playoffs, which we've got to still secure. But as we get there, guys who are competing on both sides of the ball the best in their roles are going to be the guys who are on the field. And right now, guys are should be competing for those spots right now. I can just add, um, does this change anything with uh, Chicharito's time? I know you said he may be available for LAFC, but what you mentioned that you guys stay on your attacks uh, more on the deeper end, does that change the time frame you have for Chicharito to come back and play? No, I mean, it, it's our time frame for Javier is going to be whatever is the safest to get him on the field and the uh, and the best way for us to have him for the rest of the season uh, in an ideal scenario, you know, with with one match coming up next week and then two weeks after that, if he doesn't, if he doesn't feel really, really good for next week, then we may not play him next week because we win two more weeks of time to really push him forward. So it's not something any of us wants to do, but we just have to do what's, what's smart and understanding that the most important part of the season is still in front of us in the grand scheme of things, and we need to have everybody available for us as we push down the end. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Katia from ESPN Deportes. Thanks, Kevin. Hi, Greg. Uh, Hi, on that same topic, uh, two-part question about Javier. Is, uh, how hard has it been? You were talking about those chances, you know, that long stretch that you guys have had. One of your DPs, one of the most important guys, and, and in, in moments like this, when, when you need that finishing. And the second part of that question would be: If you guys already have a plan of what's going to happen with him with the All Star, I know you've been trying to be so careful with him. So, if, if you have already a, a plan in, in regards to that. Uh, yeah, we have a plan, and, and it's been communicated internally, and, and that obviously involves communication with the league and everything else. So that is that is um, obviously a work in progress as you have guys who are trying to return from injury who've been off for a long period of time. Um, so yeah, that's a work, and I'm not. It's not for me to share here, but it's it's obviously an ongoing discussion. Um, yes, I mean obviously when you have a striker like Javier who was in the form that he was in. It gives you a margin of error for victory or for a mistake here or there. Sometimes that that you, you know because you have a you maybe get the goal that you're not getting right now. When we're getting chances, we need too many chances to score a goal. Where Javier will score a goal and less chances. So sometimes that gives you a margin of error, but it doesn't change the fact that we have to defend better and get Javier back, and that increases our our chances uh, even better for for victory. But. When you when you need some goals here and there, when we've been manufacturing goals over this stretch since he's been out, um, yeah, it, it'll be when the time is right. It's going to be nice to get him back in, but we've got to get him back in form quickly too. And uh, that's there's no guarantee a guy who's been off that long is just going to step on the field and start banging in goals again. So uh, we've got to work, try to work that process and and get him in rhythm and and going as quickly as we can as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And last question will go to Sophie. Hey, Coach. Um, Sophie. Kevin Cabral seems to have a really poor game today. He he seemed slight on the ball, didn't really have the tenacity, kept losing the ball. The midfield played towards him, and it felt like it felt like that's where maybe play kind of broke down and stuff like that. Don't want to be too hard on him, but it just felt like he wasn't in the game, and he just he just felt a little bit weak. Um, today. What's your thoughts on that? Do you feel like he's progressing the way you want him to, or are you disappointed? Yeah, I, I thought um, in general, I think he's making progress. Again, he's a player who gets into dangerous spots. He's got to he's got to have a higher ratio of finishing those dangerous those dangerous chances than, than he does. There's some times on his 
where he gives us something that nobody else gives us. Regardless of what anybody says about Kevin or anything, he runs to the depth, and nobody else on our team runs to the depth like he runs to the depth. And so there's something different about what he brings to our team than anybody else that's on our team. Everybody, Most everybody else likes to get the ball at their feet between the lines, but somebody has to open up the fate, space and somebody has to open up the game. Kevin does that. Having said that tonight, too many duels he lost, too many balls where he's receiving it in a one-on-one -on -one game where you have to be able to hold the ball under pressure and bring your teammates into the play. You got to be able to win a little time for your teammate to get on the other side of his defender in a game that where you're playing in a one-on-one -on -one type of game and he lost too many balls and that's for sure that's there's no question no no uh no hiding from that and, and he has to be better that's one of the areas he has to improve is getting physically stronger managing managing the physicality of the game uh better especially in these teams that get in tight to him um but that's that's one aspect of his game that he he must improve the second is finishing obviously his chances when he when he does but he has such a unique gift which is that to stretch the field and we don't we you know Sam sometimes stretches the field Javier on the field sometimes stretches the field a little bit more but with the quality of players that we have that play between the lines we have to have guys who stretch the field or else those guys will have no space to play and you won't see Victor in the game you won't see Sebo you won't see those guys who we have that are special between the lines if we don't have guys who stretch the depth and Kevin does that more than anybody else 1500 to 1,200 uh, high-speed meters per game going behind the line. So he's got to get better. There's no question. That's a process. But he does something different than anybody else does on our team. And, and we have to improve him, and he has to be focused on improving and getting stronger and doing the things that he has to do to be more effective.